Welcome back guys to week 5 of Hand Technique Demystified. Today we're going to apply the Gladstone or free stroke technique to the French position and the traditional grip. I hope you're on track with everything that we've discussed last week. Remember all that looseness and the throwing and catching and bouncing the ball principles that we've discussed in the German position. Now let's apply the same technique to the French position. In the French position the natural movement of the wrist does unfortunately not create a stroke anymore. And instead of trying to squeeze a stroke out of an unnatural wrist movement, you should rather turn your whole forearm, or to be precise, your radius and ulna, in order to get an open, bounced stroke. Same principles apply. Still throwing and catching or bouncing. By turning your radius and ulna. And in a more open position, you would move your forearm up and down. And in an even more open position, like on a right symbol, for example, you would actually lead with your elbow and, and turn your upper arm up to your shoulder sometimes, maybe, you know? This would be the way Keith Carlock plays his right symbol. I mean, he has many different ways in this French position to play the right symbol, from fully out here to more in there. But he always uses this kind of forearm, heavy forearm movement in his power French grip on the right symbol. The rest pretty much stays the same, you know, full, down, tap, up, or in a more closed position, full, down, tap, up. In the French position you can create a beautiful open seesaw effect when lifting your stick up before a full or down stroke. So don't do this. This. In the traditional grip, it's also not a movement of your wrist, but again a rotation of your radius and ulna. Like this. So let's start at the home position. Keep your stick at a 90 degree angle to the floor by slightly pushing your elbow in. This certainly will feel unnatural at the moment. However, this is very important in order to allow the stick to rebound fully. Otherwise, the movement will end here. So keep it straight, squeeze your elbow in a little, but also really without tension. It's just, just have to get used to this little squeeze here. Keep the stick straight and also straighten out your fingers. And from there, boom, your full stroke. Throw and catch. Throw and catch. And again, when you get faster, the stick doesn't stop anymore and it becomes a bouncing movement. As an exercise, you can really lock in your thumb and index finger. You can also put a little coin in here between your thumb and index finger, just to make sure that you're not playing the stick with your thumb, but that you're creating the stroke by turning your forearm. So lock that thumb and index finger in, and you can also open up the rest of your hand, or you can open up your whole hand, basically, but then again, it's very tempting to use the thumb. So keep the thumb and index finger together, open up the rest of your hand, and explore the rotation of your radius and ulna. All right? So that's the full stroke. And then again, here's your down stroke, here's your tap, and here's your up stroke. That's it. Full, down, tap, up. In the German position, you can too create a stroke by the turn of your radius and ulna, like this. You know, instead of playing from your wrist, you're turning your forearm, like this. 
This is actually a very old way of drumming that was used in the military. And if you use that in your right hand and traditional in your left hand, you're basically using the same kind of movement. Sideways. A lot of traditional grip players use this movement when changing to match grip so that they don't really have to change their playing technique. You know? They are turning their radius ulna here and there. So the technique really doesn't change. One good example of this technique would be Tony Williams. He used this kind of very powerful match grip motion a lot. But let's stay with the basic way for now. So here's your first exercise. Full down tap up with both hands. Together, full down tap up and alternating. Full full down down tap tap up up. Full full down down tap tap up up. So you might ask why full down tap and up stroke? What's the musical use of that? When you alternate hand to hand strokes at that kind of volume and tempo, you're alternating down strokes. Faster, you're alternating full strokes. When you play them softer, you're alternating taps. When you now start to add accents to that, you're immediately using all four strokes. Down tap, up tap, down tap, up tap, down tap, up tap, down tap, up tap, down. Full down, down tap, up tap, full tap, 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 down. Down up tap tap 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 down down up tap 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 down and so on. Everything you play with this technique is either a full down tap or upstroke. It's one of those four. That's why it's the most basic and common technique. You can play everything you want with just four different strokes. So that's it for today and for our most basic gear. Next week, we're going to look at our smallest gear, our fingers. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section or go to my website for further information, more lessons or to contact me. Thanks again, please hit like and subscribe and see you all next Monday.